Hi everybody, this is JB and uh, I'm on my track uh, in Saint-Etienne. So uh, this video and this uh, little uh, blog paper is about resisted printing. So today we're going to go and do three things. We are going to test the uh, Exergini resistance uh, pulley device. So we're going to calibrate it and we're going to see how to uh, build a load velocity profile with that. And uh, I'm going to compare it with the sled resistance that is more classical. So to use uh, the devices and to get the force, I'm going to use some crane scale. That's very simple uh, force measuring uh, sensor uh, that you will see during the, the, the following videos. And to get my velocity and my running velocity, I'm going to use a GPS unit. So I'm going to carry the GPS around during my entire session. And then we are going to analyze the data and see and calculate everything. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is to calibrate the friction on your sled with the track because every sled on a different track will have a different friction and the friction will influence the resistive force depending on the load that you apply. So it means that if you apply the same load on the sled but there is different uh, friction coefficients, you have different resistances. So in order to do that, you can use this system that's a crane scale that's calibrated to measure tension and you display the tension in newtons or in kilos so what i'm going to do is that i know the kilogram mass of my sled that's 25 kilograms i will check by pulling at a constant speed the force that is uh, resisted and the coefficient will be the ratio between this force and the amount of force that i put on the sled okay let's go so i'm going to attach that here all right I'm gonna set it to kilograms like you can see here and then I'm gonna pull it at a constant speed let's go all right so you see that the kilogram displayed was around eight so of course it's not you know very accurate but it's oscillated between 8 8.2 so that's going to be 8 kilogram of tension force for 24 25 kilograms on the sled conclusion my coefficient is about 8 divided by 24 that's exactly one third so i know that the coefficient of friction of this sled on this track today is about 33 percent and that's what i'm going to use later in the load velocity estimate okay so it's time to sprint um, i'm gonna warm up so complete warm up and then i'm gonna do uh, unresisted sprint so a maximum acceleration up to my maximum speed that's going to be my reference and then i'm going to go with four resistances with each device so that's going to be four resisted sprints with the sled i'm going to use something like 25, uh, I guess, 35, 50, and 60 kilograms to have a wide range of resistances. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same with the Exergini. So I'm gonna use a very little amount of resistance, intermediate resistance, high and very high resistance. The idea is that for each resistance, I know exactly the resistive force or the resistive load and I will know exactly with my GPS the maximum speed. And then I will compute my load velocity profile that will help me know exactly what load or what resistance will put me in what uh, velocity context. That's velocity-based training applied to sprinting. Let's go. We are, uh, this is my uh, GPX dashboard. So I have just um, uploaded the unit uh, measurement data which takes a few seconds then i'm going to go to sessions i'm going to find the session uh, of the um, of the trials so it's going to open all the series of my sessions uh, on on the dashboard and that's going to be the full training session on july uh, 13th so that's a basic uh, dashboard of a gps session so here is the session. I'm going to ask to show the details of the session. 
so details of this training session please and here you have two things uh, to start with when you go to the details you have the map of course and you have the time course so we go uh, and see that later so this is the map and this is the the, the heat map where I produced my maximum uh, power uh, on this session so this is just to see uh, where things happened and this is the timeline of the of the speed so, okay so you here you have the uh, filtered speed but you can also display uh, many many things uh, uh, and in particular the row speed so I'm going to use the filter speed but the row speed as you can see here is very 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 close to the filter speed and I'm going to zoom in and just identify each sprint and each max velocity so I have started with two loads that you can see here so first load on a sled second load on a sled then I did my maximum sprint uh, here then I did another set of two loads with the Excel Genie and then another set of two loads with the sled and then uh, another set of two loads with the Excel Genie so I'm, I'm not gonna show each load but this is the way I find the top speed so let's take this sprint here I can zoom in here very very uh, narrow zoom and you can see here that this is the increase in speed and you see um, here the, um, the GPS position that is moving down the track so that was an acceleration and basically I'm going to record the top speed uh, that was here at 4.75 so the thing is uh, I can export that into Excel and identify with a max function or whatever but uh, I'm just gonna write this down speed 4.75 and then I know the corresponding load and I'm going to build the load velocity relationship doing this so let's see for example another sprint here this is the next sprint so I'm gonna check that this is also an acceleration so I did it the other way because I guess it was with the sled and I didn't want to take the sled back to the starting line so here I have a max speed at 406 and another one at uh, 391 so 406 is going to be my speed my top speed for that condition so now you understand why uh, GPS is very very useful in this context because it just takes a few seconds to uh, take the maximum speed for each trial and to write it down and, and, and set the, the tables of the load velocity profile spreadsheet to build your uh, load velocity um, uh, relationship and then to have any load that would induce any uh, percent decrease in max velocity so that's the range of decrease in max velocity from zero to a hundred percent that's the uh, uh, spectrum as defined by uh, Michel Cahill so basically here what you need to do is to fill all the yellow cells with the body mass uh, v0 is the maximum uh, running velocity uh, from the FV relationship but you can set here the maximum velocity that's going to be roughly the same and as you see here uh, this is my no load sprint zero so my top speed was 7.7 .7 meters per second and then I set here all the sled loads so this example here is using a sled so I used 25 35 45 55 that in this in these conditions that were my um, uh, my loads and these are the maximum speed I could reach at every load so that's from the GPS uh, system then everything is uh, is uh, automatically computed so here you have the display of the load velocity relationship you see it's very highly linear 0 0.96 the R square and here in this table it uses the the equation of this linearity uh, to uh, display the load that you need to set either in kilograms on this sled on that track or in percent of body mass to reach to stimulate the different zones here from almost no resistance to strength speed so for example here if I want to be in my uh, maximum power zone let's say uh, I need to set loads from 43 to 67 kilograms or for myself 58 percent to 90 11 uh, 91 percent of my body mass so that's very important here these load range is uh, depending on the friction so it means on another stadium on another track with another uh, sled that's going to be different and this is what's interesting in this spreadsheet is that it automatically adapts to your testing uh, uh, conditions now I'm going to show you the example for the Exer Genie pulley system so here I did exactly the same uh, uh, testing but using the Exer Genie system so here I feel the maximum speed 
for each of my exergeny reps and these loads are the loads well it's written in kilograms but uh, on the exergeny it's written in in pounds but anyway that's the gears the different gears of the exergeny two five eight ten and i could run at 542 nanana etc and here the relationship is a bit less linear but it's very good quality of, of linearity 0 0.9 that would um, maybe require me to repeat that test or maybe to remove the data uh, here i could because this uh, uh, is obviously an outlier point so if i remove the data the load uh, the linearity will be uh, almost perfect and this will adjust but i recommend not to remove the data but rather to redo the trial at the end of the day here you have the load setting as a function of the decrease in velocity for the exergeny system for my personal case so that's very very athlete dependent but this is my uh, load decrease in velocity relationship so if one day i want to do a session with uh, loads at the exergeny that that put me in the power zone or in the strength speed i know that's going to be from 6 to 12 or 6 to 16 you know so that's going to be very easy to 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 set and implement the final uh, part of the spreadsheet here is in case of uh, using my sprint to determine the maximum speed so in the previous examples i determined the maximum speed using the gps system but if you don't have a gps and you can use my sprint app that's very simple you enter here all your splits from the app and the app is the, the spreadsheet is going to calculate the maximum five meter split velocity or running speed and uh, and plot here as a function of the resistance so that was another testing i didn't use that my sprint app testing on that uh, testing day but still it shows you that here you can use and compute everything based on my sprint so a study has shown that the five meter split the maximum five meter splits is a very good proxy for maximum running speed in sprinting